you and I for the keen eye. It's just me today. I'm all by my lonesome with Cherie. We're super excited to have Cherie back with us today. It's been a long time. Full year and a half. Yeah. And we're really excited. I th- Actually, it's funny. I was listening to the podcast with you yesterday. And you were the first podcast we actually ever recorded a recovery story. I remember that. Yeah. It's super fun. Um, and last time, a little different from last time is we don't have the kids in the background, which right? <laughs> which is actually kind of unfortunate. Um, it was kind of fun last time. But we'll actually kind of just jump right into there because like, that's, that's a big change in the last year, right? Yeah. Big time. So when we talked last time, you were seeing your kids 40 hours a week. Yes. And so what's that look like now? 40 hours a day. <laughs> Kids, I got my own apartment uh, in September of 2018, and the kids came. It was a quick transition, and they were home with me full time, and that was quite the change. Yeah, no. What's that? I mean, what's that kind of been like in the last <laughs> in the last seven months? Crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, very you have crazy. four kids, right? Yeah, four. Two of which are toddler preschoolers. And their sched- their schedules alone keep me pretty busy. Three of them in three different schools that start at three different times and end at three different times. Um, yeah, just stressful. I think it's fair to say for a lot of parents that like. I think, and sometimes it gets romanticized, especially when you're young, you know what I mean? Like, oh, having, <laughs> like, having kids is going to be so awesome. Everything's going to be so great all the time. Like, it's just going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say that it's just not super fantastic all the time. You know, <laughs> it's it gets stressful. Safe to say. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up was uh, a mama. My sister mm-hmm. was 10 years older than me, and she told me, she said, that's all I wanted to be was a mama. And a cooker person. I love to cook. <laughs> and she told me I hated my name because Cherie did not make a good mama name. <laughs> she's like, they're not going to call you Cherie. Uh, Super cool. So how, so I'm assuming, not assuming, I guess, I'm guessing this is some newfound, like a newfound level of stress, especially being sober. Definitely. Yeah. There was, the thoughts came into my head quite frequently that I was a better mom when I was high, mm-hmm. which is clearly not true. <laughs> but that's what my mind told me, and I had to work past that. So what are those conversations like with yourself when you do say, man, I, pro- I might be a better mom when I'm using? So like, what does that kind of, what does that conversation like go like? Like kind of how long does it last? You know what I mean? Is it like a quick thought or is it like? Definitely just a quick in and out thought, but right. it's. I had more energy, obviously. Mm-hmm. My mind kind of lies to me and tells me I had more patience when realistically I didn't. Mm-hmm. But I felt that way. <laughs> the house was always a lot more cleaner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But for the wrong reason. Are you working too? Right now, I have got some housekeeping jobs and I do volunteer work where, where I can. Mm-hmm. When I can. And you weren't working when we talked last time, right? Last June? Correct. Yeah. So in the last year, you got full custody, your kids, and you started working. So managing all that, yeah, that is stressful. <laughs> the more layers we add on here, the heavier yeah. this blanket gets, man. That's a, that's a lot. So what does your recovery look like now, now that you're kind of absorbed? Like, are you going to meetings or just pretty? Do you think you almost get, like... You're so busy with life that, like, using doesn't really, like, it's kind of those quick in and out thoughts, but, like, it's not consuming as much of your life anymore. So it's kind of like you don't think about it as much, or is, am I off base? Oh, no, you're spot on. They, um, yeah, that's, I'm, I was just telling my dad that last night. I'm so grateful, so grateful that obs- it, the obsession to use has been lifted. It's no longer there. The thoughts of using, absolutely, they come in and out of my mind. For the most part, they come in my mind. I'm like, that's dumb. 
think it through. Look where you came from, look how far you've come, and the thought is gone. I think the biggest, probably the biggest challenge this year is, uh, so the kids' dad was out of the picture for two Mm -hmm. years. When I got clean, he was still in his active addiction, so that kept him away from the kids. Um, He came back in the picture in March of this Mm -hmm. year on Indy's birthday. He went into the hospital. So that was a whole transition, having daddy back in the picture. and, Mm -hmm. um, And then he passed away. In June, June 29th. Mm-hmm. And that was, it is, it's, you know, they just got their daddy back. Yeah. And Mar- Marley was a da- daddy's girl, and before that, and Indy and his dad were like best friends before all that. Aaron and David finally had somebody to look at and to call daddy. And the day I introduced Aaron to introduced um, Aaron to Maddie at the hospital, he was so excited. He's like, "I have a daddy now." Mm. Oh, so that's that's probably been our biggest struggle right now. Yeah. So if they I mean, got their own just different levels of grief and mm-hmm. um, yeah that's extremely hard it i think ev- for me and, and everything comes back to the support system i've built mm-hmm. over the last two and a half years in the recovery community and in my church community and I'm like People are always like, how do you do it? I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, this is how I do it. I got I got support. I got huge support. And we do it one day at a time, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's no way in hell I could do this alone. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that support piece is, that's super, like you said, I mean, I could only, I can't even imagine, you know what I mean? That's like, Especially for the kids, like you've mentioned too, it's one of the like, hardest things you can ever go through. Mm-hmm. And honestly, they're kind of lucky to have somebody like you who has a support system, mm. and you being sober too. I mean, that's to have somebody that they can come to and be like, "Hey, this is this is what's up," and like, "This really <laughs> sucks." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I obviously, which is a huge understatement. Oh, like, yeah. There's like, <laughs> I I have no real way to fathom like. Yeah. the levels of grief that they could be feeling and that you're feeling you know, in a realistic sense like yeah. was there temptation surrounding that oh so that's what i was gonna say yeah the um so this summer was the first time in a long time that the uh, that the thoughts of using entered into my mind and stayed a little bit longer than they should have mm-hmm. <laughs> or have been in the past right and so I did what I learned how to do, and I reached out for help, and people walked me through it, and still clean. Yeah. Definitely not by myself, but right. they all the support. And, well, sometimes I don't even know how I do it, <laughs> right. honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, like... <clears throat> For a lot of people, you know, that are still in their active addiction or like in a situation where they're young in recovery mm-hmm. and like something that were like something tragic like that were to happen. Mm-hmm. I think that's I, th- I think that's something that usually kind of kicks you back down and like it's a night and it does regardless. Do you think the amount of time you had in recovery played a role in how you managed and coped with kind of some of the grief around the situation? Absolutely. Not just the time. I mean, all the tools I've learned to use mm-hmm. in the couple, in, you know, in the past years. And um, in the 12 steps, one of the first questions that's asked is, do you have any reservations? And on the top of my list was... Um, losing someone I love. 
and I realistically, I, I genuinely believed that that was not something I could get through clean and sober. But watching people ahead of me that have been, there have been, there's many people who have lost people in recovery, lost loved ones, and they, they managed to stay clean through it. And they shared their, their experience and their hope. And I learned through them and I, learn to have faith that it, they can do it. It's possible and you can do it mm -hmm. for today. That's cool. It's just, I mean, like, it's just like, cause you know, you hear stuff like this happen all the time. Like, I mean, like, not like in like that happens all the time, but people, you know, like we've had multiple stories before where, you know, people are like, oh, I'm in it, you know, I'm in recovery now and things start going really well and then something tragic and traumatic happens and it's like, oh yeah, and then it was five more years. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, and so yeah. it's, I think this is a huge story for people to hear just because like, like you said, they've seen the people that have come before and gotten through it and even just for today, you know, today's six months from six months ago. And like, and that's, and that's huge. And like, it's, it's yeah, incredible. Those are some of the main, you know, those are the people that help me walk through this every day. Mm -hmm. Help me, you know, help hold me up when I feel like I can't walk and help out with the kids and, you know. Yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know I have friends that have become my family that have they say you call anytime day or night and we'll be there mm -hmm. and i know it's true because i've i've utilized that <laughs> offer <laughs> right and what's that like i mean because i think that's hard for people too is reaching out you know because everyone says like especially in a time of grief like absolutely. oh let me know if you need anything you know whatever you need you know and so i mean and for somebody to reach out was that difficult or kind of what was that? It's experience? become, I guess it's one of the basic tools I learned when I got clean. Uh, I was, was so desperate for help. I was willing to do whatever it took and whatever it took included reaching out and asking for help, no matter how uncomfortable it made me. Mm -hmm. Because I did not want the uncomfortableness of using again. And all that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. um, I ask for help all the time. My my son's in middle school now. Um, <laughs> that's just a whole different level of struggles. Right. <laughs> that's my baby, too. <laughs> He's my oldest. At the beginning, I felt bad because I could, it, I could not sit down and help him with his homework. Not, I mean, I can but not in the way that he needs. So I recruited uh, a homework helper, somebody that could help, somebody that could help him with his homework. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I delegate a lot, if you will. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so Andy's got his homework helper and I got, Freedom House was a, is, is a huge, huge foundation of mm -hmm. my support. And I know I can, I know I can drill up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and ask for help and I've been struggling my daughter's been struggling yeah really bad with her with her grief mm -hmm. in different ways yeah. and she was having another really difficult morning and it was before school and I refusing to go to school and get dressed and shower and brush your hair all that basic stuff and mm -hmm. I it was it was kind of like a it was kind of I don't know it was a, it was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back on that situation so we got in the car and I drove to Freedom House and <laughs> in tears I knocked on the door and I was like can we talk to Mama Gail <laughs> she's a house mom mm -hmm. and 
asked her to let us in and she let us visit and she prayed with us and it was it's and then we you know the salute the, the problem wasn't solved but it was it definitely brought peace mm-hmm. and just um just another step that we can do this we can move forward we can just right. No, definitely. No, I think there's a lot of weight to that. I think there's a lot of weight to the confidence in that situation. Because I think that's kind of what is hard the most. You know what I mean? Like you said, when you very first started, like when you first went to the house, you know, what are your reservations? You know, mm-hmm. I think like having that almost disposition or just belief. I mean, there's like no matter kind of what faith you carry or how you see it, or I think there is a lot of power in just faith whether it's faith in yourself or faith in your higher power faith in the fact that like i think once you start saying things like we're gonna be okay is the first step to really being okay Mm -hmm. and it may it's a long road and i think like that's i mean that's hard man it's i just can't like i don't ever want to downplay like the grief that has to be has to come with that and that's gonna be that's gonna be very present for some time but I think like even I think that's a huge first step is reaching out when you know you need it. And then once you can once you know, like and you're confident that you can get the help when you need it, it is also that confidence to say, like, even give if your daughter I don't believe, even if I don't believe that we're not going to be OK, I'm just, <laughs> right. just saying we're going to make it through this. It's going to be mm-hmm. OK, even if I may or may not believe it. Right. Got to say it to my um this this fall was really rough for me. It was um, right after Maddie passed away. It was his birthday, followed by our 12-year wedding anniversary, followed by my brother's death anniversary, followed by my mom's death anniversary. It, it really took a toll. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got into a dark place mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. I was just... Mm-hmm. Um, I got to a place where I did, I felt hopeless and I felt like I lost faith, but I have to say I wasn't there. I was holding on by a thread mm-hmm. and when I got to that point and I, I realized I was isolating again and I was depressed and I, I sent out a group message to my, my five women that I stay close contact with through the church and through Freedom House. And I was like, this is what's going on. I'm feeling hopeless. I'm feeling lost my faith. I was like, I need help. Mm -hmm. That was the gist of it. And boom, 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 boom. Those women were on my doorstep. They were, and they helped bring me back up. It was just, I don't know, it's a good feeling. To to know that I'm not alone and that I don't have to be alone. I can choose to be alone, Mm -hmm. but I, just blessed that I have so many, so much support. So how did you go about building that support? Like, in was it from the beginning? Is there people that just like over time you've come close with? Or is it people that you saw and like, you're like, oh, I, you know, I like want to get to know that person. Or just <laughs> kind of like, a, like, how did that kind of go about? That is a good question. Because when I came into recovery, I have very little trust in anyone. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's how our world works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't trust people because the people we knew weren't trustworthy (laughs) right just like myself Mm -hmm. but i definitely felt like i had i had no one left in the world Mm -hmm. which i did i had my i'm still blessed to have my parents that have been beside me the whole time and to help and support me but i built strong relationships through the 12-step program and freedom house Freedom House was huge for me. They, mm-hmm. like, twice a week they would have volunteers that would come in and do um, devotions with us. So I met multiple people through that. And then Freedom House brought in a discipleship program, which was like spiritual counseling once a week. So through there, I met more people and gained more trust with people. Mm-hmm. People that understood and don't judge and just love and or nothing more than to help. Mm-hmm. 
How long did it take for that trust process? Because, I mean, I think what's kind of misunderstood about, like, um, especially people who have gone through addiction and are in recovery, some of those mistrust, I'm trying to, reactions, I guess, you know, or just just the mistrust in general Mm -hmm. is so foundationally built in a lot of ways that it's really two processes. You know what I mean? First, you got to break that stuff down. Really three, because you got to break it down. You got to clear it out. Then you got to start rebuilding it again, which is like three whole different processes. So, like, what, how long did that take? I mean, just in your experience, because obviously it's different for everybody, but in your experience, how, how, what kind of process was that? It certainly didn't happen overnight. It started with trusting one person and then, like, two people and learning to trust my sponsor and learning to trust my counselor because I know the more I open up to them, the more they're going to be able to help me. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it branched out. When you see somebody learn or just really like come around to trusting people is like one of the most beautiful things because it's so, it's hard. You know what else is cool though is not only have I learned to trust again, but people trust me. Yeah. That's that's huge. Mm -hmm. People give me their spare key to their car for if they get locked out. That wouldn't have happened five years ago. (laughs) They they (laughs) give me, um, you know, I had keys to businesses. Now I clean houses that are just huge homes. Right. And I don't walk out with anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't belong to me. <laughs> I do my job. I do it well, and I, I leave. There's a sense of pride in there. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. It, it is. I. It, 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 the thought doesn't even occur to me. You know. Mm-hmm. What this looks like I can get something for this. Right. Freeing. Yeah, like. Because yeah. I feel like when you're in those mentalities and those behaviors, you know, what I mean, you're almost like. You're almost like chained to this thought process of like, oh, what can I get out of this? Or what can I get out of this person? Or like, what what can this person do for me? You yeah. know, and like, and I think like when you kind of migrate from that and what has that experience been like for you? You know what I mean? When you do walk out of a house with your own stuff in your hand, you know, you probably don't think about it day to day, but maybe on like some ref- get you to reflect a little bit. I feel proud of my work because I do a good job and I do Leave, I leave or go to work feeling grateful that I don't have to, in the past, it would have been like, I have to get high in order to do a good job mm-hmm. or I can't do a good, or man, I can't get through this because I need something I need to fix. Mm-hmm. But now I just, and that's, that's, a really total, that's a whole new feeling in itself too, is to be proud of myself. It it took a it took a long time to um, be able to receive a compliment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really slowly over time, I'm like, yeah, you know, I did do a good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have come far. Right. Kind of proud. Yeah, I am proud of myself. Mm-hmm. Without apologies. Right. Mm-hmm. So now. When you do receive, like, some people, t- like, when people tell you, like, no, that's cool, or, like, that's a good job, like, what's the thought process? I'm proud of you. Yeah, that's a hard one. That was, that was actually something that had to be learned. Mm-hmm. Um, my counselors, mostly my counselors helped me through that. They would give a compliment, and I would try to argue it. And they're like, no, when you receive a compliment, you say thank you. <laughs> and you're like, no, you so, say thank you. So, <laughs> so that it, it took a lot of practice. And then it was funny, I was actually in a one on one with my counselor last week at Serenity House, and I complimented her, and she tried to you know dismiss it or whatever <laughs> and, I, and i looked at her and i said back when you receive a compliment you say thank you and she <laughs> laughed and she, it was it was pretty great mm-hmm. <laughs> that's super cool that's really fun <laughs> i love that 
I got my teeth back in the last 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. What? No, like, that's a super, like, simple thing that, like, a lot of people would take for granted. But, like. Yeah. Yes. Last time I met with you, I had no teeth. Zero. That was, that was, that was a major hurdle, too. That was, that was a very humbling experience. Mm-hmm. How so? Very, oh, man, all over the board. <laughs> I, that was one thing I physically liked about myself was my smile. And when it started, when my, when my teeth started deteriorating because of my addiction, it, um, and falling out one by one, um, I learned to smile with my mouth closed so you couldn't see my teeth. And then my front tooth fell out when I was early, early addiction. And so I went to the, um, I went to the dentist and he told me my teeth were unsalvageable and it was time to get dentures. And I was completely consumed with fear. So it took me six months before I was able to face that fear and actually get it done. It was actually my second major surgery and recovery. Um, the first one I got through without using narcotics, just Tylenol and Advil. Um, but I went in knowing that I would accept, I would accept some pain relief with the, mm -hmm. with the gutting of my mouth. Right. And um, so I set up a safety plan. So January, I got all my teeth removed, and and that was that was another humbling experience. I I told my counselor. I, th I thought I would have my teeth back in two months, and I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not seeing anybody until I get my teeth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, 10 days at home of recovering, I realized, yeah, that's to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was somewhere in there where I discovered self-worth. My friend laughed at me. My best friend laughed at me. I showed up one day, and I was, like, all excited. I was like guess what? And she's like, what? And I'm like, I'm a good person. I have a good heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, yay, it's about time. Because mm -hmm. like, I felt, I felt very ugly. Uh, um, it took 11 months for the time I got all my teeth taken out till the time I got my dentures. Um, and that's not an average thing, but so after I got through that surgery, I had another. They told me I needed another surgery in my mouth, and I got frozen fear again. So it took me a few months to, to face that, and then I got that, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I got uh, got my teeth. I got my smile back. That is super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed on your Facebook page, too, your profile picture, you use big smile. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, post me to smile again. I actually yeah. had to... I got so used to smiling with my mouth closed that, uh, I don't know, got a lot of firsts mm -hmm. with my babies over the last, it was my, it was all of ours. It was our first Christmas together, all four kids and myself. Even going into that, I knew it was going to be so exciting, but I also knew it was going to be a little bit of a stressful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you have a mess, you kids, you'd get it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But I was blessed. God sent my very best friend home right before Christmas. And so he got to spend Christmas morning with us. And kids absolutely love him. And so he was, he was there for that. When, when I lost the kids, I was, especially with the littles, I was so, especially with the littles. It was like I'm missing his first steps. I'm missing his laugh. I'm missing, I felt like I was missing out on so much. And then when I, when I get did get them I realized there's so many firsts that have haven't happened yet that I do get to have first with them that's why I have a photo album titled firsts on my Facebook page nice because <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal yeah it's a huge deal it wasn't just like our first Christmas with all four kids and myself but it was our first family Christmas where I was sober what was that like it felt like a blessing to be in the moment, mm -hmm. even if it was just crazy and chaotic. And it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's a feeling of joy. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, um, the time leading up to the holidays, um, 
brought back like so many memories that made me feel guilty. I mean, there was happy memories. There was all kinds of memories. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, just reflecting back on, you know, I can tell you the, the last time we all spent a Thanksgiving together was five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. There's the flashbacks of being with family at Christmas brunch and just all, just a great thing to be, um, but I remember just sitting there, just waiting uh, for an appropriate time to leave so we could go, so I could go get high. Mm-hmm. And like, it's a really like sick feeling. There's the guilt and there's just all that, but mm-hmm. I can turn it into gratitude and just like be grateful. I don't have to live like that anymore, and I can be present. I don't have to be. My mind isn't chasing drugs. Mm-hmm. My mind is chasing kids. <laughs> yeah. Good problems to have, though. Uh, yes. Yes. When you are reflecting in a moment like Christmas, when you're reflecting, you're like, however that looks like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I remember, I feel guilty because I remember the Christmas or whatever five years ago that I was just kind of waiting to go use or... Um, whether it's oh, like, mm. you it's know, either high or I was fiending to get high mm-hmm. and presents under the tree may allegedly not have been paid for mm-hmm. <laughs> or, you know, right. that's just, it's just the truth. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, actually, as I was wrapping presents and like, I bought these presents for my kids with money that I made, that I earned. Oh, uh, no, no, that's a good feeling. This is super cool. Actually, that makes me really happy that, like, you can step back and, like, I don't know, I'm sure it just, like, happens subconsciously almost or, like, without even really thinking about it. But, like, it's... I can really appreciate a moment that, like, people can step back and appreciate what they're doing. You know what I mean? Because I feel like that's a super, like, that's a forgotten part of the human condition is that, like, we get so consumed with, like, the things we're doing day to day is that we forget to think about what we're doing. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And so, like, I think that's really cool. You can take a step back and be like, man, like, and be proud of yourself, you know? Clap for me. (laughs) Clap for me. Yeah. Like, that's super cool. You need to carry around a little recorder to just, like, send your recorders anywhere. You need to get a little button on our phone. Yeah, an app. There, there's an app for that. I'm sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> Do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> we should. That would be super cool. We got to let Zach in on a patent. Though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we'll put a mullet on it for him. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. That's mullet gang. Man. <laughs> and I mean, I think for people that are outside of it, too, you know what I mean? That may not, like really like fully grasp like the grat like the gravity of the gratitude yeah you know um i think it's still important you know any time that you like work or earn something you know whatever that is and whatever is meaningful to you you know anytime like you put work in and get something back that's mm-hmm. like not necessarily like instant gratification that like takes mm-hmm. some grind a little bit i think it's super important to have that moment where like you do step back you're like man i worked hard for this like <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm pretty cool. And then, <laughs> That's true. Right? And then even if you move on with your day, you know? Yeah. I just think you're really cool for thinking you're really cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so looking forward to this Christmas? Very much. Yeah. <laughs> my in-laws, with my permission, asked, they asked if, I, if they could take the three older kids to Fairbanks to have Christmas with their cousins. My sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and mm-hmm. the kids' as cousins. Um, and I don't know who's more excited, the kids or me. My t- <laughs> for, the past, <laughs> for the past month, my daughter's been writing on her hand every day the number, the amount of days that are left. And after her bath last night, I noticed she had a 10 on her hand. I was like, I was like oh, you're prepared for tomorrow. <laughs> she was like, yep. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, we're still going to have Christmas, obviously, together, just not Christmas morning. Right. Um, 
but I'm, ex- I'm excited for them. They got, they get to have that experience. Really, ex- really excited for myself. Um, but I feel like I've been, I've definitely been wearing thin lately and I definitely put myself on the back burner for the mm-hmm. kids, which especially when it's come to this, this grief, um, it, it comes and goes in waves, but I, I don't know. I definitely feel like I need uninterrupted time to work on it mm-hmm. and to work on my steps and to, and to catch my breath and to have some self care and, um, really looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to feeling the pain and getting some healing. Right. And that's probably different from two Who years ago. Who would have thought I would have said that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to feel anything, mm-hmm. but no, it's, it's, it's a heavy weight. And then, and then also while they're gone, I'm, I'm super excited about this. They're, um, don't judge me. I'm excited to clean the house. <laughs> like, to yeah. do a deep clean. Um, and I'm going to revamp the kids' rooms. It's a cool project that I put a lot of thought into. Um, re- revamping the kids' room. Like with Indy, I'm going to do a skater's theme, uh, skateboarder, and um, ordered some personalized skating type stuff. And then with Marley, I got her... Anyway, so I told them, because it's, it's a big project, mm-hmm. and obviously I can't do that with four kids running around. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's, anyway, um, so I'm excited to have a chunk of time to be able to do that and to do that for them. And I told Indy, oh, he was asking about Christmas presents, and I, and I love um, not tricking with his mind, but getting him thinking so i told him one of your present one of your gifts this year is something that can't be opened can't be wrapped and can't be opened so i told him that one night and he was he must have been sitting on that all day at school the first thing he asked me when i picked him up he's like okay this gift it can't be wrapped and it can't be opened is it a pet are we getting a dog i'm like no you're like no i can't take care of five kids yeah (laughs) (laughs) And, um, and I mean, not only that, we just, we can't have pets at our apartment. And mm-hmm. then, oh, I just, oh, and then he's got so excited. He said, mom, did you finally get somebody to come in and help you with the house? Oh, I was like, oh, that would be more of a gift for me. But I just love the way he thinks. Mm-hmm. And he's, he can be very selfless and think of other people. That was just one of my, oh, not my heart moments. Right. So that's my projects. Well, the kids are gone. Is kind of deep cleaning the house, revamping the kids' rooms, and toward the end, I'm gonna treat myself to a couple nights in Alieska by myself and just reflect and do work and grief work and step work and give myself some time to heal, mm-hmm. so in turn I can be a better mama, because that's. I don't know. For me, that's what it all boils down to. Right. And that's a big change. I think even from, I mean, the last three years, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. I mean, even last time when we talked, you know, it's like, you know, I thought I had to use to be a good mom. Oh, yeah. And now it's like, I have to go to Alieska for two days and reflect <laughs> and work my steps and yeah. work my program. And that's like just such an amazing change. I mean, this, I like, I'm not going to like try to romanticize our ending here. The last year has been yeah. hard. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Very, very difficult. I mean, it sounds, you know, I can only imagine, like I said, I can only fathom like really what it could or couldn't have been like, but anytime there's that level of grief involved, you can't, it's not easy. It's never easy. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'd say the last year has been intense. Very. Yeah. <laughs> but the coolest, coolest thing is like, I mean, from the outside looking in, obviously is that your mindset and the way you're approaching, the way you're going to handle and cope, you know, because like a lot of what we see in our recovery stories is I didn't know how to cope. I didn't know how yep. I didn't I didn't want to feel anything, you know, and like you just said, you're looking forward to to really feel on that and kind of getting into these emotions and kind of letting yourself grieve and kind of letting yourself have some time to really heal. And that's just so cool. This is like 
this last year has been like the recovery success <laughs> thing that like just gets me going man this is like yeah, so yeah. exciting because like everything's easy when it's easy oh yeah you know but it's like when things get hard like what do you keep doing you know how do you keep going like and i think the fact that you've been the fact that you've maintained like just such a healthy mindset and like such a such a powerful mindset really like on the way through and like it's just been so incredible and like i'm just it's i don't know it's really exciting man i think it's really cool <laughs> I think this yeah. is where I, I feel I should say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's just super cool. Mm -hmm. We're super excited for for you and your next adventures, your Christmas revamping program, having some time to yourself, um, some self care. Looking forward to the new year, new experiences, new things to new things to do. Sure. As your kid, your kids are just middle school, right? Getting into high school. Yeah. Uh, I've got a sixth grader, a second grader, a preschooler, and one that's ready to go into preschool. Dang. <laughs> new challenges, new <laughs> opportunity, new fun, new Bring chaos. It. Yeah. Yes. New chaos. Well, we're really excited for you, Sheree. Thanks for uh, coming back and joining on me today. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say us. Um, yeah. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you and I for the keynote.